Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sydney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Sight Club from the Tom Numbers Show. Top of your game and news of Tom Numbers. And I've got a magnificent guest with me today. This has probably been something in the works. We've connected recently, but it's something I've wanted to do for a while. So I've got Laura Eisenhower with me. So, uh, Laura, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Are you, so are you the granddaughter or great granddaughter of President Eisenhower? Great granddaughter. Great granddaughter. Great granddaughter. So we have. The great granddaughter here. Here she is. So welcome to the show, Laura. How are you? And, I'm good. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. How would you, what what best for people that don't know you on my show? What would you, what's the best way to describe yourself? What you do and what you I I think I've got a good idea of of you because I've seen your stuff over, you know on and off through through the years of this since 2020. But what, how would you describe yourself to to new ones? Well, yeah, I'm a researcher. I'm a new author. And I'm an astrologer, but I've been very much on like a mission since I was a child. And yeah. a lot of what you'll read in my bio is exposing things that took place in Eisenhower's administration that has largely been held in secrecy. And a lot more has come in in the last couple of years. So that's the kind of research I do. But I really go into galactic history, what our DNA is truly made of. So, you know, I have my own experiences in my life that opened me up to this information um, but yeah, check out my bio. It's it's more in depth on my website, but that's the short go, version. Yeah, yeah, check out Laura's bio and she's got new channels. Links will be below. So the, the elephant in the room, I've been talking about it for the last two weeks and I think it's appropriate because you're on the show. We're just on the cusp. We're on the eve of the eclipse, which is tomorrow. And this is something that's been planned for a long, long time. Hence the, the Nineveh cities and the Salem cities, like someone or a group of people, some People knew a long time ago about it. Um, I've got my thoughts and feelings and numbers. I've just done a number show on it, all the things I'm seeing. I wanted to ask you your thoughts. And going back to your your great-grandfather and his administration, is there anything in all the research you've done in terms of the eclipse and CERN and all this stuff and portals and dimensional change, any things that you could maybe, well, your own take, but maybe some things you found out research and maybe there might be some hidden stuff that I don't know about personally yeah. in regards to what your great grandfather knew about so yeah well there's a lot of information and uh, even more information coming in from channeled messages which i'm very wary of but some just really hit home carl mollison did a channeling with him and he really talks about the anunnaki and just the history of all that and where it stands today i mean his final speech really warned us about the military industrial complex the uh -huh. military uh congressional um industrial complex and the uh, the et part of it is yeah. absolutely like tied into it um so the events that took place i have to be very careful of sharing because uh this is information they don't want us to know and if anybody's done their research about him they will run into the narratives that he signed a treaty with uh the grays right and my research has shown and a lot of different individuals that I've spoken with that have the kind of information that would know that are experiencers, that are contactees, that um, have been uh, a part of all of this at some point in their lives have said that, no, that didn't happen. So we're talking like Randy Kramer and he uh, was in what is called the USMC special section that Eisenhower set up, which is positive. Uh, it's a positive military branch that, um, helps to redirect the super soldiers into a different direction. And I'll kind of keep it short on that. But he also set up the White Hats, the Earth Alliance, and the senior advisor to the Earth Alliance said that he didn't sign these treaties and that uh, something happened in 1952 that I can't really say on YouTube that was our surrender to these darker forces. And so Eisenhower knew about that and with the help of Al Thor set up all these uh, positive military branches um, Earth Alliance and the USMC Special Section and the White Hats and Solar Warden, many say. Uh, and obviously he didn't act alone, but when this supposed treaty took place, it was actually a time that Dan Cooper, the senior advisor to the Earth Alliance, says that he invaded area, not Area 51, but the Dulce Underground Base. And that was a bigger battle than the one we hear about from Phil Schneider. So all of this has been covered up. And to dig into this, you know, I, I put it all in my book. A person obviously has to have discernment. When you, but when you find out who Dan Cooper is and all the other information that 
um, other researchers and experiencers uh, also say, then the common thread between many is that, um, yeah, he didn't sign anything. And this other surrender agreement is where it all began. And that was in 1952 when the UFOs flew over the Capitol. So it's better to just kind of give the bullet points. It's more uh, explained in the book. But yeah, the positive military forces um, and how Val Thor helped him to petition to the Guardians. A, a lot of secret space program whistleblowers have talked about this. Um, but a lot <laughs> that I share in the book, a, a lot of researchers haven't even heard of the information I put in the book. That's how difficult that information was to um, discover because the president, after the Second World War, there was at least 21 levels above him where the president had no access and wow. president following Eisenhower. And then it became 28. Right. So when we look at the shadow government, when we look at the warning, that's what the warning is about. And the warning has a lot to do with the dark technologies being used, um, particularly the Mockingbird media indoctrination programs. The thought that in many people's mind that we won the Second World War um, doesn't allow people to really dig into what's really going on, not just here, but all over the world. When we're looking at what's going on in our skies, um, what's being uh, cast upon us that um, is very much leveraging the different planetary alignments going on and weaponizing them into a form of a psyop so that they continue to take our energy and continue to manipulate. Uh, and, and if we don't realize the weaponry that's being used and how they can manipulate all this, then it's easy to fall prey to it so uh, I try and expose all of that and recognizing it's morphed into a war on consciousness. And there are a lot of different ways that they are able to assimilate a person more and more into this sort of AI. And this is what we need to be very aware of. So a lot of the technologies you mentioned are a part of that. But I feel that what's happening with the eclipse, there's a lot of uh, a showdown of sort of energies. And there are white hat operations that on the world stage level, when we see what's happening, we might mistake it for a so-called terrorist attack or something happening that, um, you know, is, is a part of, uh, you know, trying to traumatize us or, or or put us in a very compromised situation. But I feel like it's being overridden by uh, the more positive branches that we don't know a whole lot about, we'll, but we'll eventually um, get more information to confirm it. So it's best to not panic. I mean, obviously portals and dark energies and all the different things that they've been doing in ritualistic ways. And, um, through the use of dark technologies, are trying to engineer a artificial timeline, but it only functions based on the energy it's able to siphon and harvest because it's parasitic. So if we don't give our energy to it, our valuable life force and energy, and we allow these activations to actually help us to switch on what's dormant, we're going to be that override frequency that de-weaponizes the dark weapons. So we have to understand our own energy flow and what is important to focus on and be an observer to what's going on, but not get so yanked into it that it, it, it steals our vital creative energy because they mm -hmm. need us to create the darkness. So if they can unleash demonic energies then yes if we're an open vessel to channel these energies that want to get into our bodies and get into our heads yeah then then that's not good but if we're really doing the spiritual work and shielding ourselves and holding a high vibration of love unity and integrity um that that stuff can't enter us we are the higher that's why they're so afraid of us we hold the higher you know energies it's just we've been tricked out of it and we have to remember uh what we need to reclaim our divine yeah. blueprint you know so yeah, we're the manifestors, aren't we? We can create. And so what better way to create a world if they or a, a reality than take those that can create, lie to them, deceive them, and let them manifest it on their behalf. Um what do you feel so I so President Trump said uh before 2020, he said he caught the swamp, caught them all, no one could have done it but him. And obviously he's the figurehead, he's the tip of the spear of the alliance, etc. right now. And so I always, I mean, I listen to different people on their things as much as I can. I do my own work and I listen to him. He's the one that is kind of my go-to. And um, so I've always felt, well, he's in control. Him and him, him meaning him and his team at the Alliance, they're in control of it. They've caught them. And so a lot of this stuff is playing out. Things are taking place. So I'm an ultimate optimist. I'm positive. You talked about a positive 
timeline, etc. Positive is 115 in numbers, 11.5. 11.5 happens to be the election this year. Whether we see an election or not, people are saying all kinds of things. And But I think that date is, I think it almost as a victory. But this stuff with the eclipse that's happening tomorrow seems really quite possibly magnificent. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I'm an observer. I research. I, I get downloads and I just instantly do it. Oh, okay, it's that. And I've been looking at a few commentaries on it and it seems you know the whole thing with nasa doing their thing with the rockets uh cern doing their thing and i feel and i don't know where you stand on this but i feel that the good guys are have got cern now and it's like well and i was asking one i was having this last week and he didn't really want to go into it per se but i was saying well if they've got these technologies and why don't we use it on our behalf why don't we create a positive timeline and i feel that something however they do it tomorrow I think we will see and feel a difference. And and I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I'm excited to experience it. And I think it could be a, a reference point that in time as we go further into the future, we'll look back and we'll see that that was a critical juncture. What's your thoughts on it in terms of what's actually going to take place tomorrow? What do you feel that um, for us as a collective, as a community, as a world, in terms of positivity, what do you feel that could happen tomorrow? Well, I know that the Guardian forces would not have been petitioned if they didn't know that victory was ours. I mean, we have to figure that the higher strands of our DNA that we haven't switched on yet are connected to this. There's nothing really that we're not connected to on a bigger picture level. So if we're looking at these nefarious forces, they're really targeting our negative ego. They're trying to drop us and divide and conquer. So the energies of the eclipse with four planets and Aries, including Chiron, the wounded healer, and and this is the growth period of humanity. It wants to drop us into the a war uh, like energy wants our wounded ego to adopt labels and personas that aren't really true to us because we're not doing the real work. We're not looking at what we um, have gone through, uh, where we've been assaulted and where a lot of subpersonalities have been cast upon us and conditioned into us. That isn't really true to uh, what we're able to awaken to within ourselves when we, you know, do that inner work. So, um, so that is a part of this, you know, great awakening. What do we need to do? We need to look at the wounded healer, the wounded warrior, the wounded ego, and how are we holding ourselves accountable so that we can um, stand strong in our warrior missions and bring about the healing tools and modalities, the healing words and reassurance to ourselves that we're moving into something wonderful. And I feel that that works in tandem with the positive military and the forces that are here because, you know, this all relates to significant places on the planet. And the way that negative technologies have impacted the Stargates, the planetary grid network, a lot of that has been repaired with the Guardian forces and with white hat operations. So, um, yes, I have no proof, but uh, from the people that I feel are credible that are saying that, uh, you know, the white hats have their um, hand on, uh, have have control of these technologies and the fact that the rings of Saturn are dissolving and these, you know, darker agendas are really breaking down, you know, when it's, uh, when a sphere, when an outer barrier was placed around the planet in 2014, which come from the Guardian forces, they cornered these deep state players and, and they're still continuing to, you know, sort of trap the rat, right? But it looks like, oh my gosh, you know, that's what they're trying to do to us with these 15 minute cities and everything like that. But it's actually more than likely the opposite of what's going on. So we got to look at timelines too. Where is our creative energy? Where is the flow of energy in us? You know, is it possible to experience a completely different timeline than the one that we're talking about, which is way more positive because of what we believe or because of what we don't know? You know, I don't have the answers to that, but one has to consider that, um, you know, there is some kind of bifurcation or some sort of uh, continuation of trying to pull people, you know, in. Uh, we we see that with so much that has already gone on, but I'm looking at more the rehabilitation, the ability to have our hands on the the, the high vibrational and and um, benevolent healing tools and modalities uh, on a more advanced level to help people to recover from the assaults, right? And that's a choice for them to embrace, to know those resources are there, to know that um, you know this is all happening, to dismantle the energy cords with this inverted system that, I mean, if you look at it, it's not really slowing down. A lot of laws are being put into place that can put you away for a really long time if you say anything that would go against this narrative. But I really feel they're in their death throes. So they're really, really desperate to just throw us into that fear, to just, you know, beat us down in, in, in the last ditch efforts to um, 
be relevant and uh, that parasitic force is mostly being starved. So there might be a few that are still hanging on to it, but the enormity of benevolence and, and awakening and positive military forces, the guardian uh, alliance um, and some beings that went rogue that uh, were not a part of the non-intervention agreements that are also assisting us. I mean, all that has to be considered. And I think it's important to just have an open mind. I try not to have fixed beliefs. I think there's a lot of credible people saying what they're saying, but I feel we're here for soul development and spiritual development. As long as we can unhook and we, you know, stand strong in our alignment with uh, the organic ascension timeline, which has been prophesized and it's, you know, a, a recognized window period where, you know, the sun is shifting energies. We're moving from carbon based to crystalline. I mean, nothing can stop that question is, are we in alignment with it? Are we moving through the growth periods that help us to initiate and activate into the fullness of all that we are, or, or are we being siphoned into the weaponized version? And so I think there's going to be a halt on uh, humans falling prey to this because a lot of them are well-intentioned. Do they really deserve this sort of outcome because they just don't know they're being duped, right? I don't think that the yeah. ignorant, or the not knowing deserves this sort of destiny. So I think that's another part of the presence of what's benevolent and having these technologies um, mitigated from doing damage to assist these souls in recovering and and assisting them in 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 gradually coming to terms with something that they depended on, something they believed in, coming from a really good intention. I mean, I feel like you have to be a really dark and overly demonic person because you allowed those forces in to face some sort of ramifications of a dismal future. I think so many are well intentioned and just did not know it was too much for them to bear. Like like it is when you see somebody. Uh, in a partnership that they don't want to look at the red flags and and you see the red flags and there's only so much you can say, but they have to just see it for themselves till they're ready to break free and know they deserve better. And then they can recover from the wounds and the injuries and the traumas. And and yeah. some might never go away, but at least you have cut the cords and you're moving on. Right. And I see that metaphorically in the smaller picture with the Libra South node and people moving away from the jobs and relationships that are super toxic and not good, that it's the same thing in releasing ourselves from any kind of dependency bond to a system that's messing with our heads, that is pitting us against each other. And I think the minute you break the mind control, which is the ultimate weapon, and you align, there's nothing that can't be alchemized, cured, healed, and rehabilitated within the physical vessel. Because they wouldn't bother with all of that um, indoctrination and fake news if the weaponry was enough, they wouldn't even bother. But you have to be hooked in to the belief systems and the distortions for the dark weapons to even work. So once you free yourself of one, I feel like the rest begins to fall away and clear from the body. But, you know, there, there's going to need to be extra assistance and there will be extra assistance available. And it's already right under our nose. I mean, I go to events and the people that have tables that are working with sound and sound healing and frequency and right to fight, you know, it's 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 all there. And if you look at some of the people that have recovered from these projects and programs like Kathy O'Brien, I mean, look at what they did to them and they were able to find a way out and they were able to reconnect with true source. So there's nothing I feel we can't handle. It's just important that, um, you know, that this will be the breaking point for people, this eclipse. And, uh, and I don't think it's going to be as bad as what people are saying, but with that awareness, you know, it's, it's counteracting it and not feeding into it through holding a strong energy of of love and peace and being in nature and maybe shutting off your devices. And uh, yeah, if we're all on the other side of it and we can all say hello to each other, um, yeah, then <laughs> that's awesome. But we'll no matter what- above the parapet. Yeah, sorry. I know I'm kind of rambling on there, but- <laughs> Well, thanks for sharing your feelings on it. A couple of things you mentioned. So I liked what you said about the positive military. Positive is 11-5 again, which is November 5th. I, whatever that is, whether it's election, I think I see it as some kind of, I see it as the victory. Um, and military is 107 in numbers. So when I do the numbers, it's all of the alphabet. A is one, B is two, C is three. But uh, military is 107. Trump's is 107. Superman's 107. Quantum is 107. Uh, currency is 107. Aquarius is 107. Uh, Eternal life, 107. Atonement, 107. So positive military comes to 222 in the numbers, and that comes to a 1,000 years of peace. comes to Wyndham, New Yorker, the Tesla Hotel on 8th Avenue, 
even uh, Mar-a-Lago is known as the Winter White House 222. So I think all these things, and I, I just love that when you said that about the positive military. And when you talked about carbon and you talked about crystal, the carbon in numbers is 53. Also come to the word uh, COVID, interestingly enough. But carbon is 98, which is profit, which is independence. Um, it's Romanoff. It's 9 plus 8, which comes to 17, which is Q. Um, interestingly enough, when I first started getting the numbers, um, I was looking up Diana in the first week or two of lockdown, and something that prompted me to look up, up her funeral service. It started at 9.08 in the morning. 9 plus 8 is 17, Q. But 9, 98 is, is crystal. And when you add those together, carbon 53 plus crystal, uh, 98 comes to 151, it comes to Jesus Christ, it comes to nuclear research, it comes to Switzerland, and we got the whole thing with CERN. And so people have criticized CERN over the years because of the things that were going there, and that, that's fine, but I, I've always felt that it, it would be flipped, and I think that's happening tomorrow with what they're going to do. I think I think the good guys, the Alliance, are using that to create a portal and take us on a timeline. I mean, it says, you know, where we go when we go all. So it's like if your intention is good, then then you're going to be at that level and you can be taken along. So I'm just really curious to see the physical, spiritual, dimensional, conscious reality changes that come. So I'm just excited to see what, what we see, you know, on the ninth, um, whatever that may be. And I think it could be the beginning of it because uh, April 8th, April is 56, which is healing, which is light. Eighth is Tesla, 57. Human is 57. So April 8th can be healing human, healing Tesla. Comes to 113, which is trumpet, which is universe. So it's a universal thing. This affects the universe, not just us. Um, and uh, if you do Monday, April 8th, that comes to 185, which is Donald John Trump. Book of Revelation, the Silver Reset, the Matrix Reset. And if you do Monday, the 8th of April comes to 239, which comes to 1963. It takes you all the way back to, to JFK, the events of JFK. So I think this is, as you know, you talk eloquently about it. There's so many narratives, so many timelines, so many strands of all this. And even the strands. So I've heard that um, our DNA will go to 48 strands of DNA. I've done shows with Ishmael on this, and thanks to Ishmael for connecting me and Laura's been great. Um, but it's interesting that the day tomorrow is 4-8, it's April 8th, 4-8, you know, so it ties into the potentiality of upgrading our DNA as well. Yes, for sure. And we got to remember that the tactics of the deep state is to weaponize us and to uh, have us be the result of what they influenced us to do. So, you know, they really tr want us to do their dirty work. It's just uh, the power of suggestion, of black magic, of manipulation of the mind, right? It's like um, we have to understand that Pluto moving into Aquarius and kind of going through that birth portal, that's a portal, and Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto that were conjunct each other in the beginning of, you know what, that rocked the world. Um, you know, the, it, it always represented a big growth period and transformation for humanity um, to begin to let go of the old paradigm, move into going from Pluto and Capricorn to Pluto and Aquarius, this age of enlightenment or whatever you want to call it. But it's really authenticity and sovereignty and living your truth. That's why my book is called Awakening the Truth Frequency, because it's all about our truth and what awakening is awakening the truth frequency. Uh, yeah, nice. the awakening. Yeah, awakening the truth frequency. And, and and it's and it's what what is your truth? It's not what is my truth that somebody else should adopt, right? It's like what is your truth? What are we really made of? Who are we really? What are we afraid of um, in being ourselves? Uh, what are we afraid of in letting go of the things that really don't serve us that we know aren't serving us, so that our spiritual path can be completely integrated into our physical and we can begin to switch these dormant levels on which the planetary alignments and everything we're going through and the life events that we manifest in our lives are encouraging us to do, but we tend to judge our experiences as failures or losses that we can't seem to overcome. I mean, of course there's going to be loss, but uh, we're, we're moving through a very chaotic um, veil and net that we've been encased in. And so a lot of the upgrades, we confront psychic warfare and attack when we begin to, you know, get to the other side and they begin to lose their grip. And a lot of people are already on the other side and they incarnate into this physical planet to sort of bridge or to 
you know, help dissolve all of this. And and we're all here to work together. We all hold different puzzle pieces. That's why we come in with a unique Zodiac chart. But it's really 12 houses, 12 signs, 12 strands of DNA. And now the 13th sign, which I go into in the book, is a great purifier. It, it clears the nucleic acids of our DNA, which are elemental, of all the toxicity, all the programs. And this is like happening naturally. So th these are all distractions. These are all ways to hook in, take our creative energy to battery up something artificial, and Mockingbird, I mean, that's imitation. Everything about it is imitation. How can it take, you know, a major growth period for humanity and invert it to the point where uh, we respond in an opposite way? We give our power away. We we trust something outside of ourselves. And uh, it's a time to let go of that. And that's what this is all about. So, of course, in a really powerful time that we're going to take a leap forward because the power of eclipses lasts for about six months. They're doing everything, you know, they possibly can. And all those what ifs are equal to how much we're moving through that birth canal or that portal to the other side of being more assimilated into that web or more free of it. And so I feel, you know, there might still be, you know, a failing timeline that exists to a certain degree as long as the only weapon they have left is still working, which comes through the news, comes through frequencies, through our devices, comes through all these different fear tactics. But I don't think it's going to come through the dark technologies, the reversal grid technologies or CERN or, you know, what's actually going on uh, that we've been witness to because we're elemental beings and, and we're the shift and it has to happen from within. We can only win the war of consciousness from within. And the minute we claim that victory and we unify with each of us claiming that victory, that is going to, you know, be a more amplified and it's going to begin to knock away the parasitic forces. They're, they're going to have nothing to feed on. Right. So it's just important to know that, you know, focus on you and what your creative intent holds, observe everything else. And like you have brilliantly, you know, understanding the numbers, knowing, you know, what's on our side. Um, is is a living reflection of what's on our side from within as well. We wouldn't be able to perceive it if we ourselves weren't holding those energies of upgrades and benevolence within ourselves that are rescuing us from our own negative ego or our own dependency on a program or any kind of propaganda or indoctrination that we might have gone through. We we we're we're very well versed in that starting from a young age and it doesn't matter when a person wakes up, but the next generation there's so many people building healing centers and, and new schools to pull them out and protect their sacred energy so that they can help guide us into the future instead of be gender confused and completely, um, you know, so so we got a lot of work ahead of us. But, you know, I, I think those that can perceive this within themselves can perceive all that is good going on in the world. And those that can't are going to be shut off to this. And, 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 and they're one breakthrough away from seeing a much larger picture that is beautiful leading us to a very beautiful future i feel yeah i believe in the the beautiful future i'm excited to to see it and um be in it and i feel like the last four years i mean i was always awake and looking but i definitely noticed a quantum difference when 2020 came in it was like okay they're going to do that and then on the on the the reverse end there were energies, activations amongst all of us a lot that, and others, you know, our viewers and other people. Um, and we were upgraded, I believe. I, I feel I was in terms of the downloads with numbers and I'm looking forward to the next jump. You know, there's been smaller jumps along the way since 2020, but I'm looking forward to the next big one. Um, and earlier you were talking about people and they just didn't know. And I've said this to family members and friends before, but Say, for example, like if you think of a human as a, as a child, as a, as a baby in a, in a maze, and they've got to get out of the maze somehow, but it's dark, they're blindfolded, and all they can hear is a very faint bell sometimes. And they don't even know where the bell's coming from. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like Earth is impossible. It's stacked against everybody dramatically. And so it takes, we can do as much work as we need, but it does take a, a divine quantum component of, of change for us to get out of it. And uh, because I don't understand all the whys and wherefores of why we're here. I ask that question all the time, like what's the point of all of it? I mean, there's many wonderful blessings and excitements along the way. And I do ask the question, you know, what, what's the point of every, all of it? Why, why are we here? You know, what's this, what's this all about? Um, it's always the eternal why, but for us to jump out of it, to, to be free, to be liberated, 
and if people didn't know any different. And I'm looking forward to where we go with it. And I'm also looking forward to seeing others wake up. I'm beginning to see others that weren't really awake, but they're now beginning to ask questions. And I think it's almost a, it's a precursor. It's a, it's a pre, it's a teaser. It's a trailer of what's coming, which I think probably will look back relatively quickly and see well actually that was probably just a mass i think it's the first trumpet i think there were other trumpet i always used to say i thought the second trumpet was 2020 um and it could have been but i think the first one at some level is tomorrow and you know how many trumpets are there going to be how many how many jumps how many quarters do we have to go through how many upgrades do we have to go through i guess in, in hindsight looking back we'll know exactly what it is but while we're in it yeah you know, let's enjoy yeah. the ride you know totally totally it's so important and yeah you know, we we our upgrade as much as our body can stand it. I mean, people have ascension symptoms and it's a lot in this physical density, but as you know, the earth moves into a higher earth, you know, based on the changes that are happening and the fact that we're in this window and the Milky Way and Andromeda and cores being one with each other and just all the changes that are happening, all the evidence of these corrections with Venus transits, planetary grid work, uh, and 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 what's like coming in the mother energy reclaiming the planetary core uh, after these dark cycles of history where that energy was barely grounded in the planet. I mean, there's so many indications that something truly amazing is happening that, um, you know, will lead us into these, you know, shifts and changes that sometimes present themselves as adversity and challenges, but that pushes us to retrieve you know, what what we have not had access to. And we got to move through the gatekeepers, the frequency fences and seals and the net. So, you know, what yeah. is guarding that? What is trying to rule um, and veil us from true source or, or our, our higher self? You know, so so moving through that thickness is where, why it's so uncomfortable. And a lot of people aren't willing to or they're, you know, they're answering to these imposters and, you know, tyrannical authorities. But, you know, those of us that are aware, you know, we're moving through that. And uh, and we might, you know, in our lives, cut through it many times and then find ourselves back at square one. Maybe there was a major attack or just a life event that was difficult. But, you know, it's not like it comes back, but the illusion of it, you know, tends to because it's really much, you know, the the. I mean, the net is and 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 on all of that and the seals in our DNA is the scrambled fire codes of junk DNA that we learned in school was just useless. So, you know, we, we have rewritten history. We have nothing we can reflect upon and heal from because none of it's accurate. How could we heal from our childhood if we're being told lies about what we went through? We would never be able to move through that, transmute it, or find the wisdom or or the release valve if if it's not even accurate. We'd be healing something that isn't even ours to work on, or we'd be, uh, you know, just going by what anybody tells us. And then we might say to ourselves, you know what? I don't remember it that way. I did a hypnoregression. That's actually not the truth. You know, these are all lies, right? So the inner work people are doing, the hypnoregression people are doing, you know, the exploration of Akashic records and past lives and, um, you know, really tuning into your intuition and and being able to just feel that gut instinct of something's not right here. This doesn't feel right. You know, that you, you know, you don't get overtaken by it. And I think a lot of people are defending their captors, the degrees they got, everything that they were taught, because it's so difficult to admit. Defending their they, captor. I, I like that phrase. That's, yeah. But they can Just take those skills that they learned and begin to push People got rid of the sacred accounts, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and they can take what they learn and shift it into a better direction instead of going along with the next wave of, uh, you know, d d exploit people and 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 blah, blah, blah. And I, I want to be careful with what I share. But yeah, so so that that is a difficult wake up for those that really invested in it, but it shouldn't be. You know, we've all been duped to some degree. And uh, and this is a reunion. This is not about adopting another belief system or some, you know, it, it's really about realizing like, whoa, you know, you're being used. You're being, you're, your gifts and abilities and talents are are, are being leveraged. You know, yeah. it's time to like build together and, and embrace those skills and abilities. Um, and uh, so. With the planets, what you mentioned a few of the planets and the stars and the constellations. Is there anything with Jupiter at this time right now? Jupiter and Uranus are going to be conjunct. I mean, to me, they're already conjunct. Uh, 10 degrees between two planets is considered a conjunction, but it's getting closer and closer. So Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus. I mean, this is like a breakdown of the financial system, you know, just the breakdown of everything that rules Taurus. Because Uranus is like the wrecking ball, but it's the planet of great awakening. Um, 
It's shock and upheaval that leads to great awakening. It's the tearing down of the old and the rebuilding of the new. It connects us with our higher mind and synchronicities. It helps to, to you know, at Uranus rules Aquarius, right? And Pluto moved into Aquarius. So Uranus conjunct Jupiter, which expands everything it touches, has to do with wisdom, life experience, philosophy, travel, adventure, and just, you know, the expanded mind in Taurus, Uranus. If we look at it in our personal lives, it's rebuilding our self-esteem on our own terms because our self-worth has been very uh, programmed by the reward system in society. You have to do this to be successful. You know, this is the only options of career that you have. And if you don't go for it, you're an outcast or this is just, woo. you know, uh, and a lot of star seeds that are told um, that, uh, you know, they have learning disabilities or they should go on some drug or they have, you know, these labels and symptom uh, diagnoses that, you know, the whole system is set up to uh, crush that Uranus energy. So for a while, Saturn was square Uranus, which is dark Saturn doing everything they can to trick us out of our own awakening or, or, or not able to let us go right now that Jupiter Uranus in Taurus is amplified. Um, it really tears down the dark Saturn and helps us to rise to the higher octave of Saturn, which is self mastery and being a teacher and overcoming obstacles and the trials and tribulations of life, which sometimes for us is overcoming tyrannical abuse of authority and, 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 and how it's disguised as being, you know, a rule or discipline that we should adopt, whether it's the way we are raised, whether it's a religion we uh, connected into, whether it's, just anything outside of ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, what do we need to tear away and deprogram on that level to, you know, anchor this Uranus Jupiter energy from our higher self, from the shift that's happening and have it, you know, remove what doesn't serve us to amplify, you know, the, 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 the higher energies that are grounding right now on the planet. So, um, Saturn being in Pisces and Neptune being in Pisces is trying to harness our creative imagination and anchor it into and assimilate it into something that we don't want. So as Uranus and Jupiter are in alignment in a grounded earth sign, it'll help to purify and cleanse where our creative imagination has been infected by distortions, programs, psyops, indoctrination, fear, and so that we can clear that part of us and actually and get these upgrades because that's what Uranus Jupiter represents in Taurus. So it's a collapse of things that we've attached ourselves to that have played into our worth. You know, people's bank accounts are changing. It's making them feel very fearful. So Uranus also rules the nervous system and anxiety and PTSD. So can we let go of these attachments, be resourceful, trust ourselves and our higher awareness and our internal guidance and also the changes that are happening for the better and begin to redefine what abundance and self-worth means to us and, and recreate in a way that isn't um, hooked into this inverted system, but uh, be able to manifest abundance uh, in, in, a, in a sense of community and with people that are moving forward and away from all of that. So that's where the wrecking ball is coming in and where we're in fear of that or hanging on to it for dear life. It's going to help us to detach and uh, and clear the creative channels from anything that is infecting it that uh, it would want to infect in order to keep um, these dark agendas alive, you know, basically. So it's a really good alignment. I see it in different people's chart when I do their charts and it hits everybody kind of differently. But ultimately, um, Taurus connects with self-worth, abundance, what you value most. And Uranus is breaking down maybe the old attachments to things that aren't as secure as we thought that that aren't maybe going to remain in our lives. And if we hold on to it too much, how much are we compromising ourselves? And if we are holding on to it, can we make a change within that institution from the inside out and stand up for something and not consent to the next level of insanity that they're putting on our children, putting on our teachers and everybody that are in these professions. So this is an opportunity, which is really amazing. And it's a part of that Pluto Aquarius of like being like, whoa, I'm awakening to it all. I'm letting go of that. And then taking that Neptune, Saturn and grounding our creative imagination, our dreams, our visions, our hopes, our, our true goals that connect with our soul that, you know, we can all assist one another in manifesting and creating and then turn Saturn into a boundary so that we don't let anything into that sacred space of that creative flow. And um, so they're not going to be able to stand the light. That's why, you know, they're trying to cover up the, the sun. They're trying to, you know, create a psyops with all these alignments because they know that on an earth cosmic level their demise is 
inevitable and victory is inevitable for us. So they're, that's why they're they're ramping it up so much and they're actually really frightened and they can try and open as many portals as they want, but there's no demonic energy that can override spirit and the activations that are happening if we can just not be distracted or allow our creative energy to um, enable a future that we don't want because we're the ones writing the script here and uh, we just have to remember that. This is a huge time of acceleration this year ahead. Well, it's... Um... <clears throat> So in, the reason I was asking about Jupiter because that's 99 in numbers. Judgment's 99. Ascension is 99. Patriot's 19. The word 13 is 99. And Carbondale, where the X kind of gets the center of it because of the previous eclipse and tomorrow's one, is a place called Carbondale that's 99. And tomorrow is the 99th day of the year. So that's why I was asking about Jupiter. But it's interesting what you said about Uranus. So I'd I probably done it ages ago, but I, I couldn't recall. So the numbers on Uranus come to 94, which is Ace of Spades, which is November. Where will where will Uranus be in November? Where, what constellation will it be in in November? It'll year? still be in Taurus. It's making its way over to Gemini. Jupiter's making its way over to Gemini. And okay. uh, yeah, so even in 2025, um, do, they, do, they, do they say then in the constellations for quite a long period of time? It's not like a month or two. It's like Uranus, a kind of half a year it, or a season. Uranus, Pluto, and Neptune are the slow moving planets. And when they retrograde, you know, Further and then they out, yeah. Yeah. so Pluto's going to be traveling through Aquarius for 20 years. So, Is it? yeah. And it retrograded into Capricorn like two or three times. Um, so, Uranus, uh, so Uranus, even in, um, 2025 is going to be in Taurus. It'll make its way over to Gemini. Jupiter will already be in Gemini. So, you know, obviously that connect uh, that conjunction is breaking away pretty quick because Jupiter moves a lot quicker than Uranus. Neptune is moving into Aries. Saturn's moving into Aries. So it's really like the dream warrior. If we got through this year and uh, really, you know, stayed uh, in alignment with the flow of energy that are coming through from cosmic alignments and the sun and and grounding into the earth, you know, we'll be on the other side of a lot and Saturn and um, Neptune and Aries, you know, the Aries energy is the ego, right? So if the solar plexus ego identity is connected to Neptune, then it's not so compartmentalized anymore. It's really integrated the spiritual, the soul into the ego, right? And if not, then, you know, we're dealing with a very infected person where their creative imagination is all caught up in whatever uh, but i think there's a big purification and clearing of that and that this eclipse is a major milestone in the ability of those dark forces to do you know any more damage or have this next wave or even get away with the blue beam and even if it does there's going to be so many people calling out they'll probably have a big glitch jesus will come down and start to glitch like <laughs> they'll be like wait a second that's 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 back, not back like again like a like a retrograde renegade master if you like doing the depths flashing back and forth um uh, so I mean, it's, hard that... to say, but... it's hard to say okay um in november so pluto will still be there because it's going to be in aquarius for the 20 years or so will there be any of the smaller what well, the closer planets that will will pass through there between now and november was it just pluto and aquarius they're the only ones at that time together um, well, when we move in, uh, yeah, well, next year, um, anytime we're in Aquarius season, there's going to be a lot of, you know, faster moving planets around it. But, you know, for the year ahead, um, Pluto will make aspects and alignments with other planets. But, you know, we're we're in Aries season, then we'll move into Taurus. So, you know, the Uranus and Jupiter um, will, you know, be very strong, particularly for, you know, Taurus energies. And if you look at the T guy and his North node, um, his son is conjunct Uranus. So, you know, those planets are about to transit his North node, which has to do with his greater destiny. So, you know, I don't want to say uh, how I really feel about it all. I think there's been um, imposters that have uh, made it confusing to know who's who and what, who's doing what, but the transits are, are really, you know, strong for this Jupiter Uranus, which you were talking can about. You so, can you tell us how you really feel or will that be tricky for the ch uh, channel we're going to go on? I or? don't know. I mean, I, I, I hold, I hold um, support to the good and all right. Including yeah. him. 
there's some things that are very questionable and I don't turn a blind eye to those questionable things, but I don't allow myself to have a fixed belief. When you say here, you mean you say Mr. T? Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I know that some amazing transits are going to happen. I know what his North node looks like, but not everybody's going to be in full alignment with their North node, which is in their chart, which is the soul trajectory, but it's going to end up being a strong enough force in them to rectify anything that they might've agreed to or consented to or anything about their past. I mean, the North node is our soul growth and that's the 5d, right? When we're soul centered. So even if he got compromised along the way, I have a lot of faith that he'll be able to undo that. And I also feel that there's imposters and a lot of fake news and we don't really know. So I hold a lot of faith for what he is capable of doing. I love Dr. Shiva though, and what he's doing. And um, I think we all have a piece to bring to the table. Uh, and I just don't look to one person to do it all. And um, so uh, I- What I, are some of the imposters that you see? Can you say who the imposters are? I think they, they have a lot of body doubles. I, I feel like there's a lot of theater and a lot of deception and some is for the good and, and yeah. it's white hats and it's necessary for protection. But you know we might not be getting the real story when we see certain things taking place. So I just don't have fixed beliefs. I just believe that you know, he is an important leader in these times for sure, but that we're all standing up and we are leaders as well. And we come together in unity, which I think is a lot of what that stands for without it, you know, and it's not the same right versus left that we've seen before. That's for sure. It's not part of that same game, but sometimes it appears to be that way. So I don't want to, you know, sometimes I'm on the fence and sometimes I feel a certain certainty. So it's just better to kind of keep it vague. I got, I just got to see how, you know, things sort of turn. Um, what do you but, see in the North node? That's a new phrase to me. So I'm interested in that. What, what do you see? So the in North node is sort of like, you know, and I got to go cause I have to jump on another thing. I'm so, I, I really enjoy being on. I hope we can do this again. So North node in our chart is like, what are we here to step into it uh, and integrate right now? The yeah. clips energies connect with the nodes, right? Cause it, it okay. represents an evolutionary jump and a growth period for us personally and for humanity. So all yeah. eclipses are on the nodal axis and it represents, you know, like, like what, what, wh where do we need to grow? What, what do we need to step into? Right. So four planets on the North node in Aries. So, Okay. And what did you see in his, wait, you said in his right. north node? I, 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 yeah, his north so I already node. explained that in the beginning, right, of, of the eclipse energy. So his north node is the sun and Gemini conjunct Uranus. Uranus is all about liberation. I talked about Jupiter, Uranus, authenticity, truth, and that's liberation when you stand in that and are empowered in that. So in the sign of Gemini, it would be, you know, speaking words that relate to liberation and freedom. And that there is a lot with Jupiter, Chiron, and Neptune in his chart that form a harmonious aspect with the North Node that show a great healing. Like there's a spiritual energy there. There's a lot of targeting and difficulty. But when I saw his chart, I was like, wow. You know, and Jupiter is about to transit um, that area of his chart. Uh, and I, 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 all I can say is his North Node is incredibly good. That's the kind of North Node you want to see. If you look at the B guy, you know, the one that's in the office now, there are uh -huh. so many squared aspects. There's so much derailment. And we know that he's not even occupying his body. And if that's even him. So there's a hijacking there that the T guy doesn't have. As Trump says, he says, I don't think it's even him. I don't think it's him. I don't think it's him. Think right. So, I mean, the whole true. point is, though, he's got a really, really strong north node. And it's the kind that if your personal planet, like your sun sign is conjunct your north node, you are not going to miss the mark. It doesn't mean that he didn't get tied up in some difficult things. And it shows that in his chart. But the North Node is what we're here to step into. So if he has Sun, North Node, Uranus, and that's well aspected in his chart, that's a really, really good indication that he is here for our freedoms, freedom of speech, all the things that uh, we need to be free of without naming all those things. Like, it's a very, very good chart. Um, but yeah, he's massively targeted and there's a lot of deception, but um, it, it, even as Mars is connected to his North Node in a harmonious, positive way. So... You know the the deep. Do you see a positive future for Mr. T carrying on with his leadership role? I do, and and even, but if the election doesn't happen, yeah. well, why why try and change something that you know is is is? I mean, it's like can't we just look over here and build fresh and 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 support one another? You know, um, he's a leader. There are other leaders, and that we pool ourselves together and. 
You know, if the election doesn't happen, is that like, oh, this has failed? No, it just means that it's not going to work over there. Let's go over here together. And let's yeah, all work. I, I can't see in the further into the future, I can't see the point of political leaders at any level, really. That we has, know that you know, this could be messed why, why would you volunteer to have someone decide over things? I think that's all part of what this is showing us. Exactly. It's, like, it's been stuck, you know, it's like, okay, we don't actually need them, you know. Actually, know his greater gotta, destiny, yeah. His greater uh, destiny is to is, is to destroy, you know, institutions and the yeah. the structures and rebuild something better. So it's it's in our favor if that doesn't work out. And look look at the ramifications of all they try and pull to stop these kind of things at the detriment of a lot of lives. So I think we should just get our attention off of elections and off of you know the yeah. leaders and know that you know we're all we we all can come together. And yes, he plays an important role, but many of us do, and we can all work together. I know you got to go, and it's been fascinating. What is Chiron? You've mentioned it a couple of times. What is Chiron? Oh, yeah. So Chiron's a wounded healer. So when people play it back, um, it's it's where we're wounded and where we need to heal. So is it, is, it, is, it a, is it a planet? Is it a star? It's what an is asteroid, it? and it's in conjunction with the eclipse energy, the sun, okay. Mercury retrograde, and Venus and Moon, all in the eclipse energy. So, so that is us needing to not be victimized, needing to... Uh, take that warrior energy and move in a healing path and do things that are, you know, helpful to help serve others. And, or, you know, we fall into the shadow side and the inversion, which they're trying to weaponize and be victimized, be pit against each other, be standing for these movements and, and, and just, they're playing on our wounds because this is the big growth period. If they can play on those wounds and leverage it so that, you know, it, it, it makes matters worse than better then then that is the psyop. Because it knows what these alignments are and, and it likes to get two steps ahead of the growth period by throwing, you know, um, just like it did in 2019, 2020 with you know what. So, yeah. you know, that is the name of the game, the black magic, the trickery. And and if we can recognize the higher level of it and the commitment within ourselves to move in that direction, we won't be yanked into the darkness and, and the archonic infections that they want to unleash on us, it'll just, it won't have anywhere to go. And and yes, I think these positive military forces are mitigating the power of the, what these technologies could do at this time. Laura Eisenhower, 174 in numbers. Thank you. It's been, it's been so uh, much. enlightening. Thank you. Uh, it's been fun to be with you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Come on my show next. Okay. Bye. Okay. I will. I will. All right. Thanks. Sweet. You're, you're all, she's amazing. All right. Bye. Bye.